Hello, this is Brad Moore, president of the Overland Park Historical Society, with another installment of My Town, My Memories, highlighting memorable moments and places in the city of Overland Park. Today's subject, the French Market. The idea for the French Market came about when a group of investors headed by Floyd Day, Frank Armanis, and Riverside Red X owner Edward Young envisioned a new and unique shopping venue which would encompass over 150,000 square feet under one roof and be designed with an international theme in decor and merchandise. Plans were underway by the early 1960s to purchase 20 acres of land in the northeast corner of 95th Street and Metcalf Avenue, the site of a family farm owned by George and Agatha Barthol for over 50 years. In September of 1962, the site was cleared and grading for the new center was underway. Meanwhile, local architect Morris Schechter had been hired to design the building with a definite French flair on the front facade, highlighted by two tall entry towers at the north and south ends of the 610-foot wide structure. For the interior design, the investment group hired the very best in the business, Brandworth & Associates, a Los Angeles-based retail firm with a prestigious list of clients worldwide. Creative director Ray Jacobs led the design team, who conducted extensive research into modern French design for the project. The end result was a very colorful decor throughout the store's interior with a mix of bold and subtle elements and a dash of whimsy that were among the firm's trademarks. The grand opening of the French market took place on October 10, 1963, a mere 44 days before President Kennedy would be assassinated in Dallas, Texas. The grand opening was indeed a grand event with hordes of shoppers and curiosity seekers coming to explore what had replaced a farm on the southern outskirts of the metro area. Transworld Airlines was a big sponsor of the opening festivities and the airline's logo was used heavily throughout the store, particularly in the grocery portion at the south end of the building. Local celebrities made appearances, French coins were given away to certain lucky shoppers, and the store even displayed a championship sports car. Shoppers were impressed by the Boulevard de France, a series of small shops along a flower cart lined street at the front of the store. Decorative kiosks wrapped with images of France were also placed along the walkway. Some of the more memorable and whimsical elements included a maypole in the women's clothing section, a bread truck complete with driver, in the grocery section, and a trolley car in the children's shoe department. Kids, and even some adults, were fascinated by the live lobster tank in the seafood area, one of the first publicly accessible tanks in the city. But perhaps the most memorable part of the French market wasn't even located inside the store. Kitty Land, an amusement area for youngsters, was situated on the north side of the building and proved very popular with area families. A train, a Ferris wheel, a mini roller coaster and a host of other rides provided countless hours of fun for families in the area. However, the fun soon began to fade. There are a host of theories as to why the French market ultimately failed after only seven years in business. Perhaps the leading factor was the fact that each department was separately owned and operated. The lack of consistency, as a department would close or be modified under a new owner, caused the French market to develop a reputation as being inconsistent, which in the retail world can prove fatal. Another theory was the opening of the Metcalf South Shopping Center just to the south across 95th Street in August of 1967. Shoppers now had even more choices in an environmentally controlled mall, which also had a parking lot that was relatively flat, unlike the sharply sloping lot at the French market, which produced more than a fair share of runaway shopping carts and car door dings. By 1969, the French market was facing substantial financial problems. Departments began to close down, and the building began to have maintenance issues that were a concern to city officials. By 1970, the writing was clearly on the wall, and the entire operation was shuttered that May. Kitty Land was dismantled and removed from the site, much to the dismay of children who often celebrated birthdays there. But within months, the building found new life in the form of Kmart, which would continue to operate in the building for 43 more years, closing its doors in December 2013. 
Despite its relatively short life, people continued to refer to the building as the French Market until it was finally demolished in February 2019 to make way for a new office and mixed-use development. The twin towers that had dominated the city skyline since 1963 were now absent, a strange sight indeed for locals so used to seeing the cupolas and spires reaching high from the hilltop. In March of 2019, the Overland Park Historical Society was gifted many bricks from the building, along with one of the copper spires and the decorative iron pieces that adorned the tower walls. These pieces are now on display at the headquarters of the Overland Park Historical Society. The French Market was a truly unique shopping experiment brought to Overland Park shortly after the city was incorporated, a precursor to the big box retailers that would come 20 years later. It will remain fondly in the memories of people who frequented the center, whether to pick up flowers, buy new tires, get their hair done, purchase fresh cuts of meat, buy the latest Beatles album, or see a special appearance by Wizzo the Clown. The French Market had something for everyone. The French Market, one of Overland Park's iconic buildings, part of My Town, My Memories.